it's called the Midwest because every single thing in it is mid. Now we head into the D ranks. I'm gonna be quick with these ones as well because while they're better than the F tiers, they're also the boring and disappointing ones for reasons we're gonna get into. Starting with... The funny thing, this is actually the easiest fight in the game. Even for a game that takes away Sonic speed, this fight actually starts you with dodging the bombs in the square arena that this fight takes place in. And once the boss drops down from the heavens, all you gotta do is spin dash into him at the right time. I know I put this guy in D tier, because one, he's very easy, and also, all he does is the same attack over and over, depending on the face. Even if face 2, he just proves it to lasers that split once they reach the floor. And all you gotta do is keep the spin dashing at the right moment. <laughs> I guess the only thing that I kind of like is the music in this. But then again, it's not a very high bar to begin with. But, hey, I at least beat Sonic Labyrinth. That's something to be proud of, I guess. <laughs> Word of advice, don't use Super Sonic here. You're gonna have a bad time. While Sonic 4 Episode 2 might be a significant improvement over the first one, the Egg Heart is... Eh. You start off by making your way through circular platforms that are actually pretty hard to maneuver unless you know your combo moves. But another problem arises when you have to keep waiting for those things to get going and you have to avoid the platforms from shocking you. And as I said before, I do applaud that this boss has an original design. And that's it. That's pretty much one of the only good things about this boss. And it's also one of the rare occurrences in the series where fighting a boss as supersonic actually makes the fight harder. But as the fight goes on, Eggman will summon a black hole, which won't kill you, but it will reset where you start in the platformer section, therefore giving off a sense of urgency in having to maneuver the platforms. While still very repetitive, the music for the Egg Heart is actually an improvement over the previous one. It still doesn't make it good, but hey, baby steps. Watch like the previous ones, I don't have a lot to say, but I also don't have a lot to hate. After you hit the belt that signifies the checkpoint, she'll run away in her minecart, and all you gotta do is hit her with your ring. Or you can just slam her with your ring. Word of advice, don't rush. You will have to time your shots or else you're gonna crash. Ah! To be honest, I don't have anything really negative or positive to say about it. This boss is very middle of the road, and also quite repetitive if you know what you're doing. Not that I despise it, it's just mid for me. Moving on. As the only proper boss fight in Shattered Crystal, as the previous ones were just racist, he starts out by capturing your friends in a giant Pokeball, prompting Sonic to give chase. She's Overall, runner, those chase star. segments are really she's easy. And as for the fight, it's also easy. He'll shoot out his rockets, lasers that you can tell the patterns, and his arms where you can homing attack. As the stage goes on, the terrain will get more precarious, but it kind of makes the fight easier rather than harder. <laughs> And his attacks don't really change all that much. Other than that, there isn't a whole lot to say about this fight aside from being repetitive. So yeah, it's just a very boring finale to a very boring game. But we will get back to this slithery psychopath later in the list. had to go a little technical with this connect patch because one i'm not using the actual connect now onto the race itself you race against metal sonic and final factory's expert layout but there aren't any items in this one so it's all about skill he will try to catch up to you and will also take all the shortcuts in the track but at the end of the day it's also a very easy race slash fight i guess the only tricky thing to me is the layout. That's why they call it an expert layout after all. If I were to do this one with the Kinect, it would have ended up a lot different on the list. But for this one, I'm keeping this at number 45, since we have other fights to cover. Oh man, 
The Rider series isn't doing too hot with their final bosses, aren't they? Well, what place is this above Free Riders? Is at the very least the Babylon Guardian has a unique design, I guess. But why he's here is because of a couple of reasons. Because first off, there isn't any indication of a guardian in the story, other than him guarding the magic carpet. Also, reaching him can be kind of tricky. While he does attack you in the later phases of this race, for me. I rarely even get to see those attacks. As being the only boss in Riders, he's very unfulfilling. And you don't even have to get first place! That's how pathetic he is! I guess the music is cool, and the way that it's actually a simulated room is unique. I do think it's a unique concept. Overall, I just think this fight is also not very fulfilling. Better get back in that lamp, GD, because there are better oh. GDs in this series. The game where Tails becomes Michael Bay. <laughs> Word of advice, don't use the spin dash here because blood will grab you and throw you out the window. This fight's basically just a glorified snowball fight with bombs because even if you try to fly, he will throw the bombs into your fly path. And I know that this fight has slower in pace because this whole game is slower in pace, but not to the extent of Sonic Labyrinth. This is actually a bit more of an interesting fight, even if there's nothing really amazing or groundbreaking or horrible to say about it. He does grow more sporadic as the fight goes on, however, and he will grab you, forcing you to retreat. Oh yeah, I do have a joke I've been saving up for this bit. Tchaikovsky! As much as I love Generations as a game, I have to say that the Time Eater is not one of its strongest assets. And I'm gonna tell you what in just a moment, so sit tight! You fight the Eggman as both classic and modern Super Sonic through a time tunnel, dodging its attacks. This allows you to switch between both Sonics for different perspectives, even if you just have to attack the chorus modern Sonic. All in the while, Tails and the rest of Sonic's friends shout out the most obvious commands that you have to do Oh yeah, and reaching that time meter can be really strenuous. So you're just saying they're trying to collect brains and then that looks like a homing shot! I guess if I have to pick out a good thing about this fight is the music! I do like that whenever you switch from modern Sonic to classic Sonic, classic Sonic has a more 8-bit feel while modern Sonic has a more cinematic feel. Which is a nice detail! Makes the fight feel a bit more dynamic. And I know it's for Sonic's friends to be supportive to Sonic, and it's in their character. I get it. But can y'all not be too obvious with things? Come on! Let me find it, for God's sakes! And after you survive this onslaught with the Eggman, along with killing the gang, they shoot out the gigantic ball of doom, and you have to press the bumpers to finish it off. And this only takes three hits for that to happen. And overall, this fight was kind of a letdown. And from a game such as Generations, I kind of expect more. Not that the rest of the game is bad or anything, it's just that I could have expected more from this final boss. I do hope that this gets rectified in the remaster. Hey look y'all, it's our first three in one. This one is quite strange since you actually fight three bosses, so I'm merging all of them in this spot. I know I put this one above the time eater for its ingenuity, but it still doesn't make this fight any easier than it is. Especially in the first two phases, because the first phase, he just bounces, bro. He just bounces just that thing, just the spring. The phase two gets a little bit tricky since you actually have to time his shots to your movement. He does bring out an electric phase, but overall that phase is still easy. <sighs> but the third phase is where things get a bit too ridiculous. In this final phase, you're stuck in a room with lasers coming in from each and every direction. But you also gotta look out for Eggman because you don't know which side of the room he's gonna pop out. All while dodging the freaking balls of doom. I actually don't think this phase is bad. It's just quite insane that there's so many things going on all at once. That's gonna drive me nuts. Other than this one phase, there's not really much to talk about. I guess that's an improvement. Okay, moving on to number 40. I'm sure this one's a gem. Next fight, we 
head to Little Planet to fight the boss of Metallic Madness Zone. And boy, is this fight a joke. Not it's bad, but still not amazing. Still better than most. I guess the only thing I can find difficult about it is the prelude to the fight. Uh, sometimes I have a hard time getting over these freaking stupid platforms! But the fight itself is... not amazing. But hey, I know this because they prioritize time travel aesthetics over actually difficult boss fights. Because all this man does is just use his gigantic cross machine to hit you with his pillars of doom. Ooh! Also, the music is strangely awesome. Specifically, the Japanese slash Europe versions. Other than that, I think that this fight was pretty easy, and as a final boss, it may not be really satisfying in hindsight, but the time travel aesthetics do make up for it in some way. Okay, these next two are gonna be pretty similar, so one will be quicker than the others. Starting off with the Egg Destroyer from Sonic Rivals. Now I put the Egg Destroyer in this position because one, it's absolutely chaotic and unhinged. The main thing you gotta do in this fight is to reach the guns of the Egg Destroyer, while also avoiding its defenses and Metal Sonic. I know that you're able to dodge those attacks, but I could just brute force my way through this fight! I guess the only hard thing I could say about it is that Metal Sonic can really mess you up. And the defenses are absolutely crazy. And even with the time limit, brute forcing your way through is absolutely the most viable option. And I know you can finish the stage and fall through the freaking boss as you finish it. I know, it's strange. Anyways, on to number 38. Much like the former, you can choose any character for this fight along with the ones from Rivals 1. So this fight happens as your partner character, Tails in my case, gets mind controlled by the Ifrit as it gets released from the Chaotic Inferno, which looks an awful lot like Crisis City to be honest. And this fight has a fall meter which serves as this time limit. And if you see a button show up, PRESS IT QUICKLY! After you hit solid ground, Ifrit will decide to shoot fire from each side which will allow you to hit him at the right time. And much like the previous fight, brute forcing is also ideal. I actually put the Ifrit above the Egg Destroyer because I just think the design actually looks kind of cool. This bird-like monster with horns and fire wings reminds me of Rodan from the Godzilla franchise, and as well as the Firebird from Fantasia 2000. That's a more obscure reference, but I'ma let that slide. Other than that, I just think that this fight is kind of forgettable, but not quite as bad as some of the previous entries on this list. Now we get to the fight with Eggman's insistence on using past attacks. While yes, this does use attacks from a boss we'll look at later on the list, it actually manages to not be a total ripoff of this boss, while still being quite similar in style. And yes, this fight happens after Eggman fakes his own death. I used to float. No. Yes, this fight does the whole running across a straight path while avoiding this man's attacks in a predetermined pattern. To me, that's not really the biggest issue. The biggest issue to me is that this fight can be a little bit too easy if you know what you're doing. And you do attack him in a similar manner by climbing up his joints and hitting the cockpit. And all it takes for you to defeat him is two fully charged homing attacks, and you can easily beat him in under two minutes. While everything else in this fight fell a little short for me, we can all agree that the boss team in this freaking fight is freaking amazing. Just, just, just listen, dude. I had no right to be as good as it is, but I applaud you for it, Mr. Otani. Good job, Tomoya. Anyways, on to number 36. And now we reach the end of the D-Ranks with Emerald. I placed him here in number 36 because the setup to the fight is 
surprisingly emotional. And it's all because of Emerald's bonds with all the characters throughout the game. Especially with characters like Sonic and Cream and Shadow. Why does the story get kind of slept on? But then Eggman decides to erase that bond to destroy the planet with the final egg blaster that he's been building up throughout the entire game. And surely all of this would build up to a truly emotional fight, right? Well, this fight is basically just like every other fight in this game. Only this time, Emerald is cracked out like crazy because okay, man no, is just on a high right now. Yeah, Emerald's attacks are actually his regular attacks just souped up to infinity. And you fight him just like you would with any other character. And the music is basically just the Death Egg music. No sad remixes or anything, just the regular Death Egg music. Which isn't a bad theme, but it could have been better. It could have had like something a bit more emotional. Like, come on. Like, we have I'm with you with Sonic Frontiers. What can this happen? Like, come on. But for real, Frontiers came like, I don't know, 19 years after this game came out. But I'm being way too unfair here. Despite the fight being a bit more basic, I placed it here because of the emotional setup. But despite those nitpicks, this fight is. It's okay, it's not bad. And with his surprise reveal in Sonic X Shadow Generations Dark Beginnings, I can see a bright future for our favorite little gizoid.